Hello darlings, I am Cassandra. In today's video, I'm going to talk to you about feng shui. Feng shui is the art of placement. It is the auto reflection of what is going on inside of us. And if you look at my thumbnail, there, was, there is a picture of Nikki Perkins. And I know people are thinking like, why well, don't you just mind your own business, you know? I get that. So after um, I was waiting for my video to see Ava and, J and Zoe and Nikki and Jamie, my favorite family, and I didn't see them, so I went to Instagram to look for her. And so when I saw the picture of Nikki on Instagram next to the woman with the crown of thorns, I thought, no. When she first purchased that picture, I commented in her box, Nikki, that picture is foreboding and inauspicious, which means like bad luck. Um, you don't want a dominant picture of a woman like that in your home because it can have an impact on your relationship. Now, I know that a lot of you think this is like fooey and truthfully, I don't know what's going on. Child, it could be in Bora Bora renewing their wedding vows, having the time of their life. Who knows? All I know is when I saw that picture and they hadn't posted, there were no pictures of them as a family. There were no pictures of them together. It was a picture of her next to that picture. It's just like, I was like, oh no, oh no, something's wrong. <laughs> So I just decided to look at my cards and, you know, I pray to God that my cards are wrong. You know what I'm saying? Because I want only the best for them. But one of the things about people who lead a public life is that I feel like it is they give us a divine opportunity to help each other grow and heal and evolve. So I'm using this as a divine opportunity to not just talk about Jamie and Nikki because we don't know because they haven't posted but let's look at love and relationships and um, I want to help you look in your environment and see if your environment is helping you um, bring in the money you want, bring in the love you want. Uh, maybe there are some health issues. Maybe you're trying to finish school and things are just not working out for you. Let me tell you something. I have practiced feng shui for over 35 years. I am in my mid-50s and I have found feng shui to be absolutely dead on. It is not a religion child, it is reality. You hear me? It is, there is order in the universe. The sun does not come up willy-nilly, you know what I mean? We have days and weeks, we have seasons, we, you know, we develop in a certain order. I have found feng shui to be extremely accurate and whether you practice everybody practice feng shui whether you practice it consciously or unconsciously everything in your environment is a reflection of who you are on the inside psychologically spiritually and emotionally because you placed it there you selected the home so it's like an outer manifestation of your inner state of being now um, there are t a ton of books on feng shui about you know just you know the different placements what they mean now what I'm going to do in this video child I'm gonna go over the basics of feng shui you know just basically the different areas and then I'm going to go in a series of videos I'm gonna go over the specific areas and I'm gonna give you some things you can do to help enhance those areas so if the first thing I want to do is just go over the Bagua, which is the charts. And I'm going to go ahead and move my camera down to my little chart. Child, my writing is horrible, but I just want to go ahead and get this done. And I'm going to explain to you a lot about um, specifically the love area in hopes to really help someone. Okay, guys. So this is my little feng shui chart that I made. Now, if I was going to wait and make it all neat and pretty, it would take forever. So basically, when you walk into your home, you are bringing in your soul energy with your chi, right? So that would be the wind that's just coming in the home. And if the chi is able to flow freely, it is considered to be auspicious, which means good luck, good things are going to happen. But let's just say you walk into the door and your energy is blocked and it doesn't flow properly. It's considered to be bad luck or inauspicious. Now, I practice black hat feng shui, which means that the door 
can only be this is where you enter okay and when you enter you look to your extreme if you look to your extreme left you're going to see your money area if you look to your extreme right it's going to always be your love area okay and if you look straight ahead that is your fame and reputation area so now let me just kind of list you know just slow down a little bit because I know one of the things about YouTube is I'm so used to people just clicking off so this video is for the person who is truly interested who is really going to benefit from this information so I don't want to run through it I want to take my time and really bring it home so to speak so the Bagua has nine sections and each section which is called a gua represents a certain portion of your life all right so you have your wealth area your fame area your love area you have your area that represents family in the center you have health some people just call it balance and they consider this to be your family and health area this is your children and creativity area so if you're a person who is looking to come up with some creative ideas or if you want to have children this is the area that you will work on then you have a travel and helpful people area so basically this is where you will put your religious figures like if you um, if you're traveling too much or too little and you want to change that this is the area where you would the colors are I'm sorry you would manipulate the objects in this area if you want to travel more or less or if you're looking for mentors or people to help you like say for example you're going back to school and you just really need a really good teacher who's going to help you you might want to really work on this area so now I want you to think of this rectangle right as a map now when you walk into your home or apartment you can place this map over the entire apartment but it also applies to every room in the apartment so when you go in your bedroom now if you look at this rectangle in this area we have our skills and knowledge area you gonna we have our career area and we have our travel and helpful people area when you walk into your home or apartment or any room you're always going to walk in one of these areas you always enter from this area okay so um, I'm going to actually link a chart for you in my description box I hope it's neater than this just so you can look in your home so remember it's a rectangle shape this is called a bagua each area is called a gua when you walk in you're gonna walk in you know think of the rectangle you're going to walk in your skills and knowledge and wisdom area this is the area where you would put like if you want to meditate if you want to learn new skills if you're going back to school like in my wisdom area I have like um, you know I just uh, I, a statue of Jesus and um, Buddha even though I could put it over here as well but it's like when you whoever you think is wise like whenever you want to learn something so let's just say you want to learn how to sew you will put your sewing books over here this is also a good area for you to place your desk if you're going back to school and you're trying to study so you're going to walk in either on this your skills and knowledge area now another thing about this area that your skills knowledge and wisdom area this is actually the most important area in my opinion they're all important but skills and knowledge will help you make good love decisions so let me show you that the area that is actually across they always coordinate in some way so let's just say you're looking for love and all you want to do is work on your love area but you keep attracting the wrong person in your life well you want to work on your wisdom area because your wisdom area is going to help you um, find a person who you're who's more suitable f for you now the thing that's interesting about this is that a lot of times the people that we are attracted to the people that we you know are type they may not be the best for us and the thing about it you know you may have had um, some previous lifetime relationships with them some karmic uh, contracts that you just probably need to um, rip up and get rid of or you need to evolve or grow but the thing is you always want to work on your wisdom area your meta you know the colors are blue black and green you want to have like pictures of mountains they all have a, a particular element each bagua 
has a has an element. So basically, I don't want to get into all the elements. I'll do videos on those later. But the main thing I want you to remember is that when you walk into your door, imagine you have a, a rectangle and you have your skills and knowledge area on, on the left. In the center, you have your career. And to the right, you have your helpful people, mentor, travel area, okay? You're always going to walk in in one of these areas. Now, when you walk in, everything is always the same. So you're going to walk in your home. And right now, in this video, we're going to focus on you walking in the door. I don't know wh where that door is for you. We're going to focus on your love area, which is in your extreme right. Is either in your bedroom, the room, in your home, but I'm going to give you some tips, some clues, some things. We're going to talk about love, child. We're going to talk about love and how to have a healthy relationship. Now, for for your love area, which is in the extreme right corner of your home, the number is two. Everything in that area you want to have in pairs. Um, the colors are red pink and white but I would kind of cool down on the red unless you're looking if you want to spice things up I completely understand but it can also cause a lot of arguments and okay so now that we're talk we're talking about love today y'all we only gonna talk about love so when you walk into your home and you look to your extreme right that's your love area but love is also going to be displayed throughout your home if you are a single woman and you are looking for a committed and loving relationship with a man you do not want to have a lot of pictures of women or you don't want a dominant picture of a woman by herself because that picture I'm not going to say that picture is going to bring that um, to you that type of luck to you it, but listen guys let, let me tell you a story we're going to get right back to this now for me, like I said, I've been practicing feng shui for over 35 years and I hate, I have to turn off my feng shui eyes. I really want to mind my own business, okay? I have looked into people's homes. I, there was this one particular person. There was a monster, like a monster in their love area. And I said, oh my God, you should, you should move this um, because this doesn't seem good. And um, the person was like, you know what? I don't believe in that. You know, I believe in, you know, I'm, I'm a Christian and you just seem a little crazy. And I was like, I, I'm just saying that's your love area. You got a monster in there. You know, I think maybe somebody's cheating on you, whatever. Turned out it was the cheating of the century. Person left them for somebody in a whole nother country. I mean, it was a mess. But I told them that, you know, I've had cases where I would go in for domestic violence and the woman this was back before you could change the law and she was like, oh nothing is going on but there were like these black um, panthers there's a lot of wild animals I'm like somebody hit me there's a lot of police reports neighbor witnesses listen guys feng shui is not you don't you you are ex, you don't practice feng, feng shui you express feng, feng shui and when you become conscientious and you say okay I am going to take charge of my life. You start looking at your environment and saying, how is, is this a reflection of what I really want for my life? So if you're a woman and you're looking for a husband and you really don't want a lot of single women around your house, child, and I wouldn't have, I would have them in couples. You know what I'm saying? So you want to have a man and a woman together. And in your love area, you want to have a couple where they are embracing. And to me, it is very important for the man to appear to be very passionate and in love with the woman. Also, you want to have the colors of pink or red. It has the element for your love area is earth. And you can buy like um, gemstones and um, I have, oops, let me not let this fall. And then I have like, you know, these are just regular, um, what do you call them, rocks or stones or whatever these are really good too now what I like to do and I know this sounds really insane but I have like a, a big jar in my office because you know they represent like a lot of people or like I want to get along with my colleagues I want to get along with my students so I actually have like a big jar of these of you know to represent a lot of people of the elements earth 
at my in my office and I put like rose oil. You also you want to have like you don't want to have dead flowers in your love area. That is just a no-no. But you can have like these are plastic flowers in the color of red and pink. You can you also might want to have some gemstones, some heart gemstones. I have like this rotor crocite here, and I keep these in my love area. And the um, cherry quartz is a really nice gemstone it attracts your soulmate child and it attracts uh good you know your soulmate friendships um really a lot of love and this is a a cherry quartz skull this is a beauty here i don't keep um this person being in my love area because i don't want them you don't want to have things Everything should be in pairs in your love area, but I do have a bigger, I love, I just have a, a deep love for cherry quartz. It's really a good loving stone. And then also, um, you can have, let me see, I got one more thing for you, you know, red, like a red candle or a pink candle. Um, so just remember, I, I also have some love birds in my love area. You can, but remember, everything in your love area should be in pairs. Now, if you are heterosexual, you should have a couple embraced. I, you know, like here, I just have these two little toys. I was trying to find something. I wanted it to be all cute, you know. But, okay, now I wouldn't use these in my love area because his arms are just not, you know, to me, you know, he has the man has to be able to embrace the woman in some way. They both just look very independent. Um, you can also have a man and a woman together, like in a wedding um, attire. That is really good feng shui. Um, so gemstones, Hershey kisses, but make sure everything is in pairs together. Two um, champagne glasses, things like that. You don't want to have things in threes, and especially, you know, because you just represent you know third person coming in you also want to pay attention to what you have in your love area especially in your bedroom like sometimes people have their baby in their in their love area and the baby kind of like there's no more action in the relationship you want to spice up your love area also if you're trying to bring some passion and some sizzle into your life so you want to like add some red like maybe some red lingerie a couple red candles i found one of the things that really worked for me in particular, um, some red chili peppers. The, yeah, you know, the dried red chili peppers that you can get. And you can like put some, you know, honey on it or whatever. It would spice your love life up. So you also want to pay attention to, are you trying to attract a husband or are you just looking to date? You know what I mean? Like you want to pay attention to that energy as well. So let me just make this clear. I'm just talking so fast. If you are heterosexual, you should have like a male and a female. If you are gay, um, you should have your girl, two girls. Um, they should still embrace. Or if they're two guys, they should embrace. You should. They should look like they're in love with each other. I see a lot of art where people, you know, people have couples, but the couples don't even look interested. Like there's just one. Um, picture where there's a little boy and a little girl there on a bench and they're separated from each other looking like they're yearning for each other that doesn't seem like good feng shui to me so basically regard uh, based on your sexual orientation you should have the couple embraced in your love area and if you could draw or paint something that would be even better because you're putting more soul and chi energy into it and also one more thing I want to say about your love area is I'm, I'm of the school of thought that you should ask the universe or God or whatever you believe in for the perfect person for you. There are people who say you should manifest who whomever you want, like you can get anybody you want. You know, I, I'm just going to tell you guys the truth. I've had people who... I, I, I've said, look, do not ask for a specific person. They ask for their person. When you get that person, that doesn't mean they're going to be faithful to you. It doesn't mean they're going to be attracted to you. I know somebody who they insisted on using that person's name. The person, you know, they ended up marrying that person who was not intimately interested in them. Um, and ended up just really, I know people who 
mates who just cheated on them. Like when you get that person, you get that person. You don't get a person who is madly and deeply in love with you. You get that person you manifested who, you know, you may get them, quote unquote, but you don't change their nature. Do you understand that? So to me, if you're asking for a person, because a good place to, um, you know, to write down your, you know, ideal mate or just to ask for love or whatever, I would put it in a heart. And I would just say, like I always say things like, you should ask for somebody who is faithful and loyal and who adore you. Um, I know people who ask for things, in my opinion, you, that employees ask for. Like I know people say, I want somebody with, you know, who's really smart, somebody who's, uh, you know, like, yeah, those are nice qualities, but I don't know, like to me, um, somebody who adore me, somebody who's affectionate, somebody who's loving. But look, it's your list, but just think about how you want to feel with that person. And again, my warning to you is I don't, you know, I'm a live and let live type of girl. You can manifest a specific person, but that does not guarantee or mean that that person is going to love you back or treat you right or be interested in you. You might end up taking care of that person because a lot of cases where I have because people do what they want to do child and they have manifested the person that they wanted and they ended up taking care of that person different people who would manifest people who the person became ill and they still ended up taking care of that person when you manifest a specific person yes you can have that person but it, you just have that person so when you ask for the perfect person for you that means you're looking for a person who is going to um, be, you know, in love with you, who's going to be affectionate towards you, who's going to be respectful towards you. You want the energy of the essence of that person, not some basketball player who is cheating with every woman. Yeah, you have him, but do you have him? You know what I'm saying? So you also want to have like, like some couples who are embraced like in this. Um, statue here. I have a, ex actually like three of these. One in my bedroom and my love areas like throughout the house. Now I like this in particular because you know they are embracing a kiss and the guy's arm is like you know he's like it's on her hip and it's just a really good passionate picture to me. I mean statue. Um, sometimes you can like tie like a red string around it if you want to add like a little bit more passion to your own love life. And then another thing I want to tell you about your love area is that this is, I know this sounds weird guys, and I know people, hey, you don't have to take this advice, you don't have to listen to this video, but for the person who wants to listen, I'm doing this for you. Um, if you walk into your house and let's say you know you, you're walking in and like maybe there's a backyard if there's a big pool of water to the right usually I'm not gonna say your your husband or boyfriend is gonna cheat but basically a man with a lot of wives was considered very auspicious so men would put swimming pools in or you know large bodies of water they would have them in the right area in the back of their homes because this was a sign of wealth for a man to have several wives but if you are a woman and you don't want your husband cheating on you you don't want a swimming pool to the right of your front door I have found I could tell you some horror stories okay of how this was so like I said feng shui is not a religion it's reality and you it's, you don't have to practice it because you live it. It's the outer manifestation of what's going on in your life. So some things you don't want to have in your love area, you don't want to have, you know, you want it to be very clean. You don't want any games because you don't want anybody playing with you, right? Um, you don't want anything like a refrigerator, or right? Because it's like, you know, it's cold. And you don't want that in your love area, child. Um, you don't want any ex-lovers. You don't, oh, am I? You do not want pictures of you alone. I would say be very, you know, don't have a lot of pictures around the house of you alone, all right? 
because it's like, you know how people use vision boards to manifest what they want? Well, your environment would be like a 3D vision board of what you want. That's the best way to think of feng shui. So if you go and look through your house right now, child, your home is a reflection of all of the things that you wish to manifest, you want to manifest, and what is going on, whether you are conscious about it or not. So I'm just going to give you a couple clues. You don't want, like I said, you don't want any single symbols in art. You know, if you want to, if you're in a relationship or if you, you know, you want couples who are madly in love, you want married couples, family, um, you, yeah, you want a home that represents security. Also, you, um, according to feng shui, and I have found this to be true, like I said, if you have like a lot of big windows, the chi goes out the window. So that, that to a certain degree, the chi has to flow through the home, but it has to settle. So if you live in a home where there's a lot of big windows, and especially telling your money area, your money go right out the window. If you have like some big windows in your love area, your love will go right out the window, right? So you want to have... Um, you know smaller windows but in another video I'm gonna tell you about wind chimes I'm gonna tell you some things you can do crystals there are so many things you can do to fix or balance the Chi so that you don't have to move <laughs> you don't if, if possible you don't want your bathroom in your love area now I know people you just can't hop up and move like that but there are things you can do like for example you can get a big boulder and you can put it next to your toilet to um, balance the energy of the water but I, I don't know I'm just gonna be honest if, if there is a bathroom in my money or my love area I'm just not moving there that's just not gonna happen for me um, so yeah so anyway I think oh yeah no television no computers things like that because those things can interrupt your television would be really good in your fame area which we'll talk about in another video so long story short in feng shui we're you know we're talking about the um element the the um area of love your love life how to enhance your love life and i've gone over some tips with you the colors are pink red and white right the element is earth so you're going to have a lot of stones a lot of gemstones um bricks i have like a ton of really big like you know like the the water rocks so i have like a lot of earth in my love area and i also have big chunks of <coughs> excuse me of rose quartz and i have a lot of statues some of them i can't even move right now of couples who are super in love i tried just to have one couple over there you know what i'm saying but i'm just i'm very conscientious about my love area now one thing i have found about feng shui for my own for my own life is that things even with me having this knowledge a lot of things still do not unfold until they're ready okay so when i was working on my doctorate degree i was having so i was having so many problems and then i realized that my wisdom and knowledge area the area i was telling you guys about earlier was actually in my downstairs bathroom can you believe it my wisdom and knowledge area so i went to the park and i got a big boulder and it had to be something that you could barely carry and i put it next to my toilet and within six months i was able to finish my doctorate degree so i have found feng shui to work very effectively for me some things some mistakes i still make like and i'm gonna wrap this up right now but just recently i have just gone through a lot um financially and in my money area which i thought was you know i have all my purple and i have everything pop i thought i had everything popping and i had like a bunch of mermaids right and then i don't know what happened but just recently i just thought to myself i wonder if i just thought you know you know in your money area they say you can put um you know goldfish so i'm thinking you know the element is wood and you know water the, the mermaid represents water i don't know child but anyway just recently i thought you know that doesn't seem like a good thing so i looked up mermaid symbolism and what i found out is that mermaids are very inauspicious outside of water because you have a being that cannot survive and i was like oh my god that just makes so much sense 
So I take all my mermaids out of my money area job. So like I said, I'm still growing and learning, but I think that I have a belief that you don't make a like, I, I don't think that you make a lot of money until you are doing what it is you're supposed to do with your life. When you are living a debt-free life and the money is flowing to the degree that you have planned for or what you want, that means that you are living the life that you're supposed to live. So anywho, anyway, this video was just really just to clarify my paranoia about Jamie and Nikki and in terms of that picture, you know, I really feel that, you know, maybe God, you know, God has other plans for Nikki. You know, I don't blame Nikki. I'm not going to listen to some crazy woman on YouTube telling me, take my picture now. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I would be like, girl, please get out of here. So I completely understand that, but I think that this is an opportunity for somebody else to grow. If you got some single women around the house, get rid of them. If you got body parts, you know how sometimes you have like just a torso, get rid of them. Look in your house and realize that your house is a 3D vision board of what you plant, of what you are manifesting, y'all. So I really hope this video helps someone. Thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.